Hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, today, I want to talk about in terms of understanding free cash flow to the firm. Uh, so when you talk about free cash flow to the firm, there's a lot of confusion in terms of how to actually derive this formula. If you want to try to memorize it, or I mean, if you understand what it is, then it kind of makes your life a lot easier. Uh, so when we talk about free cash flow to the firm, uh, what you're really concentrating is in terms of what it actually is, right? So when you talk about free cash flow to the firm, uh, think about in terms of free cash flow to the firm, uh, you usually have two people who are have invested um, have invested in the company, right? There's going to be the bondholders uh, who have given you money to invest and you have to pay interest to them. Uh, and then there could be uh, shareholders, right? Shareholders are so-called equity holders. Uh, they're the one who have put money into it and they will enjoy the profits or gains depending on how your firm actually does. So when you talk about free cash for the flow to the firm, we are talking about in terms of the free money, which is available to both the, both of the share, um, shareholders and the bondholders, right? So when you talk about free cash flow to the firm, think about the first thing that we want to add on there, right? The first thing that you want to add on there is going to be in terms of the net income because you are deriving everything using the cash. Uh, you're deriving everything through the net income. So what you do is with the net income, we are going to go and add something called as a non-cash charge. Uh, the most common one that we do know of is uh, is depreciation, right? Now, when you combine the net income and the non-cash charge, right? These two combined is nothing but cash flow, right? If you think about, uh, shoot this over here, right? Um, so when you talk about uh, net income and non-cash charge, these two is nothing but just cash flow, right? I mean, the net income is what the company has earned uh, after all the work being done and the deductions and so on. Uh, and non-cash charge is really a depreciation which you have taken out for tax purposes, right? It's not really an actual amount that you actually go and deduct, right? So that's what it is. Now, the other thing you want to take on a look at uh, other than non-cash charge is interest, right? Any interest that you had deducted uh, previously, um, you're going to be adding it as after tax. Right, here is why. Uh, so let's start with uh, net income again, right? So when you talk about net income, uh, we always take a look at in terms of this. Uh, when you talk about net income, if you try to derive it using EBIT, right? So earnings before interest and taxes. Uh, we are going to take off the interest, right? And then we are going to multiply the whole thing with one minus a tax rate. So think about what's going on over here. EBIT minus interest, you get EBT, which is earnings before taxes. And what's left over is going to be the one minus a tax rate, right? Now, if you try to break it down, trying to see why it's not expanding over here. Now, if you try to expand it, what you will get on here, you will have EBIT, one minus the tax rate. Minus interest and same thing. One minus the tax rate. Right. All you're doing is you're multiplying EBIT by one minus tax rate and then interest by one minus tax rate. This is what we get. So when we talk about calculation of why this, we have an interest one minus tax rate, uh, you really get it because of over here. So if you try to have EBIT or so on, uh, is interest, which is get added because of this reason. Now, the other thing you wanna be taking off on here uh, is in terms of fixed capital investment. So whether you invested in uh, uh, property, plan, equipment, and so on, I mean, that's all fixed capital investment. I mean, if you have a business which have operations, uh, that's something that you will have to pay for on an ongoing basis, right? The other thing that you will detect on here is a working capital investment, uh, which is money to use to run day-to-day -day operations. So once again, net income, you add the non-cash charge, you add back the interest on here, uh, minus a fixed capital investment, minus working capital investment. The net you get after you do all this fun stuff is free cash flow to the firm, right? This is the money that is available to both bondholders and equity holders to do whatever the hell they want to do, right? Whether they want to pay them back and so on, it all depends. So it's free money for them. Now, 
in terms of deriving uh, free cash flow to the firm using EBIT, right? We already came up with this information. If you try to rearrange all this fun stuff, uh, what you will have is you will have net income. So we are moving this part on this side. So you will have net income and you do, so when it switches over, it becomes interest one minus the tax rate, right? Um, and on this side, you are left with EBIT, one minus the tax rate. So in terms of you want, if they, if they give you net income and they give you all this information, then you can try to find free cash flow to the firm. If they only give you the EBIT, right? And they give you the EBIT, they give you the tax rate and all the fun stuff. Uh, all you have to do is you replace the net income plus interest minus tax rate. So we replace this and this with EBIT. What you're left with is EBIT, one minus the tax rate, and everything else remains the same, right? So you do, you, all you do is you remove this, you remove interest, and you're left with all of this. Now, let's say if they gave you um, operational cash flow or CFO, right? That's cash flow from operations. So what we know about cash flow from operations is this is nothing but net income all right so when you talk about cash flow from operations uh that's a net income and you add back you add back the non-cash charge which is once again the depreciation let's copy it down here and because it's a cash flow from operations when you talk about operations you're always talking about working capital money that has to be used for business on a day-to-day -day basis Right, so that's what you get. Uh, you get net income plus non-cash charge minus working capital investment. That's your cash flow from operations. Now, if you want to go and derive uh, free cash from the firm using the CFO method, all you do is you replace the net income, the non-cash charge, and the working capital investment. Uh, let's say if you want to use it using the CFO method, all you do is you have the CFO, which is a combination of this, this, uh, and this, and then you add back the interest the uh, one minus the tax rate. I'll just copy it from here. And you will have the fixed capital investment, right? So same theory on here. If you have the, if they give you EBIT, then that's what you do. You do EBIT, one minus the tax, the non-cash charge is what you go in. It's still gonna be on here. Um, this is gonna be on here. Right. So if you, they give you EBIT, this is this, this is your CFO, this is good. Now, one thing that can happen on here is uh, they can have something called, they can have, they can, instead of giving you fixed capital investment and uh, depreciation, they can also give you something called as CapEx, right? Capital expenditure, which is how much money you are spending on, on the property plan equipment and so on, right? Um, so, So if you if they give you capex, right? If they give you capex, you pretty much do the same thing. Uh, so you still do the net income, uh, the non-cash charge, um, and the uh, working capital investment. Now keep in mind this uh, fixed capital investment minus depreciation is a capex. So what do you see on here with capex is you just replace this. Sorry, the depreciation with the working capital investment. You replace it with capex and then you'll get the CapEx information, right? Uh, the other way they can really do it is in terms of uh, EBITDA, which is earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. Uh, so same thing, I mean, if you use the same formula and you're using the EBIT, you just add on the same stuff and you'll get the information. Now, uh, the other thing we wanna talk about is in terms of free cash flow to equity, right? Now, let me just write it down on here. Free cash flow to equity. So free cash flow to equity, what it really means is how much money is available for the equity holders after the debt holders are being paid off, right? So free cash flow to equity is being derived from free cash flow to the firm. So what it really is, you do free cash flow to the firm. You got to add back, uh, sorry, excuse me a moment. So we talk about free cash flow to equity. We are going to uh, subtract the interest that we paid right? Cause that's the money that we pay to the bondholders. 
and that's going to be an after tax rate and we're going to add net borrowings i mean keep in mind uh when we even though i mean we might have borrowed some money uh we might have borrowed more money and after we go and pay off the interest uh to the bondholders the money that's left over it's going to be net borrowing right there's i mean other than the interest that you're paying there's some chance that you might be paying some principal back uh, so net borrowing might be uh, the new money borrowed minus any principal repayment, right? So new money that you borrowed uh, minus the any new money, any interest that you're paying on the existing debt, right? So you find all that information, spell it on the right, uh, you get free cash flow to equity. So it doesn't really matter what they give you as long as you understand the basic concept in terms of how do you write the first one. Uh, so three formulas that you really have to know on here. Uh, I'll say this is the one that you will have to know. Uh, and then you understand the cash flow from operations. How is this being created? And then the fixed cap, how is this being created? And how do you drive the net income, right? So that's a pretty easy information in terms of how to get the free cash flow to the firm and free cash flow to equity uh, step by step as long as you understand uh, what's going on. You don't really have to go and memorize uh, the formula per se. If you guys like the video, uh, please like and subscribe. Thank you.